Hey everybody, it's Lily, and this video is going to be kind of informal. I kind of um, have a few ideas of things to talk about, and so I'm just going to start talking about it, and we'll see where the conversation goes. Um, so, this speed paint that's going on, I decided I wanted to try drawing with a computer mouse again, and this time, instead of drawing like a, a character, I decided to draw some still life. Uh, still life pictures. My my goal for this little project is to draw for at least an hour, an hour to like an hour and a half, every day drawing something from life on the computer using a mouse to try to refine my uh, mouse drawing abilities. It's just something that I, it's just a skill that I want to develop and I think it's a nice challenge and I think it's fun. And yeah, of course, you know, I'll, at some point I'll, I'll buy another tablet and then we'll We'll see how my skills are when I get that tablet, but right now I'm just, I, I don't know, I just want to be able to draw with a mouse. Um, yeah, so I have two speed paints. I have, I drew my glasses for the first day, and then I drew, like, a little bottle of perfume stuff for the second day. And I'm using Photoshop, and yeah. So that's what's going on in the background. Um, after 30 days the whole month, I'll have 30 drawings, and then I'll make a little video comparing, like, how my skills have improved and what I learned over the month and we'll do a little critique. It'll be fun. So yeah, that'll be up probably around the new year, seeing how things go. I know that there's um, quite a bit of concern over the, the COPPA law or COPPA. Personally, my channel, I created this channel as a as something to refer to in my resume, actually. To show my um, artist skills and to show that I can uh, document and do video editing, things like that. So yeah, really, this was for my portfolio. And also, partially for my uh, my mom, actually. I, I started the channel because she was very encouraging and she wanted me to, you know, keep making videos. And I, I kept making those videos and I really, I really started it for my mom. Um, you know, I was moving away and I wanted to, you know, show her what I was drawing and things like that. And so I'm not too concerned with this, um, new law, or well, it's not a new law, it's an old law, but the enforcement of it. Because my videos are, technically it's an int intended for a 13 plus audience. P even, even like when I make these videos, I intend for them to be people of a similar age to myself almost because a lot of the videos that I watch are similar to the ones that I make and I find these videos interesting so I just kind of want to make that same kind of content and so of course you know every channel is gonna have kids watching um, when I was a kid I, I liked watching adult shows like Project Runway and America's Next Top Model and Mythbusters you know things like that a lot of stuff on TLC I don't know and so kids are just, you know, kids are drawn to child content and they're also drawn to content that maybe isn't intended for children, but like is not inappropriate, stuff that's quote unquote family friendly. Yeah, I, I think that the main problem here is just the way that YouTube is dealing with the situation. Technically, they should have a an age gate on the main website where you have to be 13 and up to access the main website. Like, YouTube Kids, whatever, you could be any age to access that. But like, the main website, you have to be 13 up. And um, then you could go into like, parental consent, you know, parents letting their kids on their accounts and stuff. I'm sure those guidelines could be cl cleared up in, in the uh, terms of service when you, you know, you check that box. Yes, I've read it. When you sign up for an account. So I'm sh and there's there's plenty of things that YouTube could be doing, and I hope they get around to that. I hope they find something that's a little bit more p protects the creators a little bit better using like an age gate. I think that that would just be the simplest way to approach this situ situation. I'm making my videos for artists, and so I'm gonna keep making them, and I'm not concerned. So uh, why did I want to draw some still lives? In, on the on Photoshop using a mouse. I, of course I like having rendering ability, you know, I like to draw things as they look. It's funny when somebody says, oh, I thought that was a photograph at first. That's like my favorite compliment. I'm like, yes, <laughs> I tricked them for a second, you know, it's like my favorite thing. 
And of course it's subjective, people all learn at different rates and to be a good artist you don't need to be able to draw things from life and make them look photorealistic. That's just a type of art. And personally, when I, my creative method I suppose, when I'm learning a new medium, I like to be able to have that reference and to learn the medium having um, guidelines to follow, like like actually drawing something from life, helps you learn the techniques using the medium and stuff like that. And then, personally, I feel that once I got my photo rendering skills down pretty well, um, you know, with the more traditional mediums like charcoal and pencil and colored pencils, things like that, I started um, going into magical realism using photo references in combination with each other to make kind of like little magical scenes and stuff. Um, this was nice because you know I was making things that looked still like quote unquote photorealistic to an extent, but also had kind of a more of a conceptual, more there than just seeing an image. There was an idea behind it, a concept. And I did that for a while. I did, I drew my thrift store art video on here. Um, I drew like a, a bird with a scarf. That's a good example of magical realism. So I did that for a while and then and then I just, I don't know, I got kind of bored of it. And so I decided to just start doing just like straight up non-objective. And so non-objective means that it's not referencing anything from life, really. I mean, it could be referencing things from life, but the viewer's not going to know. So they're going to look at it and they're gonna be like, whoa, that pattern looks crazy, or whoa, it reminds me of this, it reminds me of that, but not, it looks like that, you know? Rather than drawing something to look like something else, you're trying to get a feeling or a composition or maybe some more of the basic elements, composition, flow, pattern, repetition, contrast, you know, you're trying to use the basic elements of art to create something that is apart from everyday life and something that you don't see in the real world. So that I got really interested in non-objective art and I still am and I think it's probably my favorite stuff to do. I mean, I love drawing cartoons too. Cartoons are fun and, you know, I keep, I, I'm gonna keep drawing them, but Drawing, drawing something and knowing that nothing like that exists in the world and it would never have existed unless I drew it or painted it or, you know, made it myself. It's just like a really cool concept to me and I just love it. And so um, starting in the new year, I'm probably going to be doing some more kind of non-objective stuff. I want to try to get into grad school. So... I need to start working on my portfolio for that. I want to get into resin art. I think that would be really sick, but it's too cold right now and I don't have ventilation for that. Maybe some resin, resin art next year. It's definitely some more abstracty, kind of interesting, I don't know, non-objective stuff. And yeah, and so I think every month I'm gonna try to give myself a project. This month it's to try to get good at, at a doing digital painting with a mouse and then next month I don't know maybe it'll be get good at doing 3d rendering in the pro the the uh, program Maya or blender or something I just want to try new stuff and yeah it's fun yeah I think I, I think I kind of talked about everything that I really wanted to talk talk about in this video I don't know I'll also I'm, I'm thinking of starting kind of like well me and my sister we've been talking about doing kind of like a lifestyle fashion channel on our own and we have some footage that I need to edit. It is a, a closet purge of my sisters and so once I edit that and stuff I will totally just like give a little shout out and you guys can go check that out and it'll be fun. Yeah. Okay cool. Well thanks for listening to me talk for about 10 minutes and thanks for watching me do a little digital painting. I hope you have a great week, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!